Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And so today we want to talk about choices. Consequence of choices. And so the focal scripture in John chapter 6 and uh, you saw where Jesus was speaking and Jesus was walking and Jesus was teaching and you saw many people were with Jesus and some people turned back because they could not take the teaching because they said it was too hard. They made a choice to turn back and go all the way back into the Old Testament where this sermon is based although we'll move all over the scriptures. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. You look at verses 15 to 20. Moses was talking to the people. And Moses was saying to the people, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. So, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you will go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear or drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I will call heaven and hurt as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendant may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord Swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to them. It's all about the power of choices. Consequence of choices. I like to say God is not a despot. God gave unto mankind free will to choose. And so, with that being said, if God gave mankind free will to choose, and he's not a despot, Meaning he's not, he's not some zealous ruler who is going to strike you down and kill you because you fail to worship him. You can go ahead and enjoy your best life now. You can live. And so because God is not a despot and man has choices, I say us in Christendom, we too shall be very careful about how we speak to people, how we speak to individuals. You cannot and should not force anyone any adult of sound mind eh, to come into church or to worship God. Yes, you know they should come to church. Yes, you know that they should worship God. But if they choose not to, if they choose not to, then you, you should not force them. You should not coerce them because you want them to come into church to make up numbers. You're going to threaten them. They're adults. You can lay down the rule in your house if they still live with you. Tell them the do's and the don'ts and the things that they have to obey. But in terms of worshiping God and choosing to follow God, you can't force anyone into doing so. People will do things so you can be happy. That is why a coerced confession is usually a garbage confession. Because if someone is in pain because you're applying pressure to them, you're beating on their fingers, you're stepping on their toes, you're doing all these things just to get some comfort, they'll tell you whatever they, you want to hear. They will tell you they invented the moon, the stars. They'll tell you anything you want to hear because they want to get out of a problem, to get out of a situation. And so we must be very careful and understand that mankind was given the opportunity to choose freely. Even Jesus Christ himself allowed people to choose. 
And when many <coughs> walk away from him, he did not castigate them. He did not curse them. He did not ban them from his presence. He didn't do any of that. So let's move over to Mark chapter 8 and look at verse 34. When he called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny self, take up his cross and follow me. Just look at, just look at how Jesus approached the situation. Whoever desires, the word desire right there is a strong feeling of wanting to have something. So whoever have a strong feeling of wanting to, wanting to follow me, yearning to come after me, this is what you must do. Whoever, Jesus did not say, if you don't follow me today, I'm just going to cut you off and call brimstone and fire on you. But we see that happening today in churches. People have the power of choices. People can choose what they want to do. And there's nothing you're going to do about it. Nothing, absolutely nothing. How many of you, when you were growing up, you used to go to church because you want your parents to feel good? Pull you into church and you sit in the church well-dressed, singing on the choir, Doing all these things, taking part in, in, in Sunday school, doing everything. And as soon as you come of age, as soon as you get out of the house, you really choose the path that you want to take on to. You really decide to turn your back on this thing. But yet still, yet still when you were growing up, even when you were an adult, they choose you and mandate that you must do it. Autocratic society. You have to. You have to. If you don't do this, I am going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. And they hold all the threats over your head. If you don't go to church and get baptized, I'm going to cut you out the will. So what do you do? You go to church and you get baptized because you want to remain in the will. So you went down. You get baptized. You get in wet. But your heart is still as dry as a chip. Wicked. No change within your heart. Because man like to look at the exterior. We like to transform ourselves with hairdo, makeup, jewelry, fancy clothes, sweet smelling perfume. And by the way, how we speak to look the part, to play the part. But really and truly, the choices that we make is a very dark choice, very dark choice. We're not doing anything that is in line with the scripture. And so Jesus said, whoever desire to follow. So your choice to follow God must come from a desire. It must come from a desire which is a strong feeling of wanting to have something. So if you do not have a strong feeling of wanting to follow God, to follow after Christ, guess what? You're just fooling yourself. I was sitting and I was thinking and I was looking at churches as we know them today. And I see many people in churches, many churches, many arenas, they're full, flowing over. And when I look at them, and when I look at what's happening, when I look at and listen to the words that they're preaching, the songs that they're singing, and everything that they're doing, I'm saying, but that is not of God. It is not of God. No wonder why every time you have a little shaking, every time you have a little stirring, there's such a great falling away from church. Because there was no choice, there was no desire to follow after God. It was all about fitting in sometimes. So our choice to follow God must come from a desire simply because our desire, our desire is mostly aligned with what is within our heart. And so from the heart springs the issues of life. So if your desire is to be rich, you're going to try and find a church that's all they're going to tell you about is prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. If you love signs and wonder, 
You're going to find some preacher that is going to always tell you about sign and wonder. I've seen some stupid things happening today because of people's desire. Many, many, many crazy things happening today. Not of God. So-called false prophets having people drinking gasoline. Pouring bleach on people. Having people eating grass. Having people crawling on the floor. Telling them to be like a lion. Be like a scorpion. And people love these theatrics. Signs and wonders. The Bible is there. The Bible is translated, transliterated into so many different languages. And man is still being duped into following these, 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 these charlatans. No. So the choice, the choice that you make must be from within your heart. It must be strongly aligned within your heart. You see, the reason Jesus had to say, whoever desire. It's because Jesus knows what is in the heart of man. And so your heart must be geared towards following after Christ. You can't want to follow after Christ part way. Because he said you must deny self. And if you do not want to deny self, you truly cannot follow Christ. <clears throat> Because self-denial is essential. Because when you deny self, you won't fit in. When you deny self, you will look like that weird one. When you deny self, they are going to call you that Jesus freak. When you deny self, they are going to say, oh, here comes this one who thinks she's better than me. Who here comes this one who, who, who thinks he's so holy. When you deny yourself, you don't participate in those crass jokes at the work site. When you deny yourself, you don't go to the job and talking about you're just looking at the menu, but you're not tasting it. When you deny yourself, there's no flirting around. When you deny yourself, no one can come and rub on you when you think it's just some little joke. When you deny yourself, you must be unspotted from the world. And spotted from the world. And so choices, 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 choices. The choices we make to follow after God is going to determine our outcome. You cannot coerce someone into following after Christ. You cannot coerce someone because you want the numbers to go up. And then you go back and you tell him that, you know, 20,000 people got saved at the, con at the convention last night. You know? You know? And the, the 20,000 people who so-called got saved at the convention last night, they are the ones that they have to party the next day, um, getting it down, doing all those things. Because they truly did not desire to follow after God. And so we have to come to this conclusion, come to terms, stop playing with people's emotion. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Let your light shine. The light of God is within you. The light of Christ is within you. And when the light of Christ shines through you, in this darkened world that we're in, man won't help, can't help it but to look and see that light. How many of you have ever been in darkness? And just a little light, when you see that little light, you feel good. But you see, when you're inundated with darkness, you just walk and you're stumbling into things. Stumbling around, stumbling around, don't know where you're going, stumbling around until the unimaginable happen. You know what that is? Until you hit your pinky toe. And when you hit your pinky toe, it's like your whole body aches. It's like you jump and you, you want to scream, you can't even scream. You stand still. Words, the pain is so sharp. The pain is so sharp. Whatever is, whatever is running through your mind. You, 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 you've seen stars. You've seen everything. And that's just a pinky toe. Because you're walking in darkness all these times. Sometimes it's your own bedroom. And you think you figure it out. You think you know this place so much that you can't bump into anything. And then you're walking in and you hit your head. The next day you wake up and then the evidence is clear. A black and blue high. 
What am I saying? I'm saying you stumble in darkness so long, people stumbling in sin so long, they think they master this, they think they know this. But one day the evidence will be clear. One day the pinky toe hurt is going to come. One day the head bump is going to come because consequence of, of, of choices. Our choice to serve and to follow God must be real. Can't be fake. Must be real. And so you, preacher man, you, people of God, who you belong to the family of God, all of you in Christendom, listen to this. You can't go around and tailor messages to suit people who are walking in the darkness. You can't go around and break it down and water it down because you want to fit into society. Jesus said that you should deny self. Let him deny self. Take up his cross and follow me. You must be willing to suffer. You must be willing to be laughed at. You must be willing to look weird. Many people choose not to follow God, you know. They know it is wrong. But they choose not to follow God. But you must be okay with them not to. You must be okay with them. You can feel sorry for them. You can mourn for them, but you must be okay with their choices not to do it. Jesus says, whoever desire to come. So we as believers, we're not called to alienate and to attack those who decide not to follow after God. Running down people with your Bible. That's what we do. That's what we do. Telling them that the blood is against you. No, the blood is not against them. The blood was shed for salvation. It's not against no man. So stop telling people that the blood is against It's not against them. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed. Shed. And once it was shed, it was spilled for all man. It's not against anybody. So telling people that the blood is against you. The blood is against you. Forgetting that a few, we few weeks or a few... Uh, uh, yesterday you were in the same situation. Oh, ironic it is sometimes. We just come into the things of God today and we, get, we, we are so holy. We start, to, we, start, we, start to, we start to criticize everyone. Beat everyone with our Bible. Do all of this calling them all devils and demons. Every day we get up, we look at them. You all sinners. We're all sinners. Saved by grace through faith. Let's not forget that. And so we were all commanded, commanded by the apostle to work out our salvation daily with fear and trembling. But some of us pretend like we're already there. We're already there. We're already there. So we, 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 we become religious people. We like some dogma. We create our own doctrine. There's so many strange doctrines in the world today. So many do's and don'ts. It's going back like into the whole, the whole testament. The, 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 the don'ts outdo the do's. Over 600. And you had more don'ts than do's. Even if the scripture tells you that this is it. Someone is going to look at you and tell you that that is not what it means. And so my brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this to you. The best, the best, the best teacher is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible that you have here, the Holy Spirit will break it down and reveal things unto you. If you read it and you have patience. It's, uh, it's on beyond me. Beyond me, I should say. If the scripture is saying this thing, a man can look at you and say, though the scripture said that, that's not what it means. And people are going to buy it. People are going to be okay with it. People are going to be so gullible. People are going to, people, the, the scripture says, don't do this, and man is going to do what the scripture says, don't do. The scripture says, do this, and man is going to tell you that, don't, so follow me, follow me. Don't follow the scripture, follow me. The consequence of choices, the consequence of choices. Jesus himself was okay with people making choices. Jesus was okay with people even 
walking away from him. People who were in such a close relationship with God, close relationship, walking with Jesus, eating with Jesus, talking with Jesus, praying with Jesus, doing everything with Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then Jesus just tell them one thing. One thing. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. Meaning you, you can't just be following after me and you're not really a part of me. What I have within me, what I have to give unto you must be a part of you. Your life must be changed. You can't just be following after me just because you want to follow. And when Jesus made such bold proclamation, guess what? Look at John 6 and verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. I want you to look at something very carefully. It says, from that time, look, they were walking with him all the time. Time is in italics. They were walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus. They were disciples. They accepted the message. They were okay with it. The scripture classified them as disciples, meaning that they were not just someone who was walking by and said, oh, what is this man saying? They were in it with him. They were a part of the church today's day principle. They were okay with the vision. They were okay with everything until you bring the word of God undiluted. Suddenly they are saying, what are you saying? What, 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 what are you saying? That is too harsh today. The world is evolving. We have to change with it. No, I'm not changing with it. Well, you know what? We can't fellowship here anymore. We're going over there. And so what did they do? Look what, look what happened. From that time, many of his disciples, not just someone on the side of the road, but people who knew him to become a disciple. That means they have acknowledged him. They had acknowledged him as teacher. So there were his students. They were being discipled into the things of God. But once they heard something that they didn't like, they decided to turn away. No, Jesus did not go and curse them. Jesus did not call brimstone and fire on them. Jesus did not do that. Jesus did not run after them and say, please, come back here. Please, I won't say it anymore. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus just focused on those who were with him. Look at verse 67. Then Jesus said to the twelve, the twelve that stood with him, do you also want to go away? Jesus gave them a choice. A choice. So sometimes, sometimes our, 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 our priority is wrong. Our priority is wrong. We want to run after those who left us. And the scripture made it clear, if they left from among us, they were never a part of us in the first place. So many people are masquerading as part of the body of Christ. Many people are masquerading as if they are into the things of God, when really and truly, they are not into the things of God. They are just there because they want to be associated. They are there because they know that, okay, if I'm a member here or if I have a foot in the door... Once I have a baby and I want that baby to be dedicated, I can run over to the church. If I want to get married or someone I know, I can run over to the church. If there's a funeral, I can run over to the church. If there's it's a little hardship, I can run over to the church. But I tell you this, I tell you this, the power of choices. You made the choices. When you stay with God, it's because of your desire to be holy. When you stay with God, it's because of a desire to chase after righteousness. When you stay with God, it's because you understand that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. And so I say to you, my brothers and sisters, choices have consequences. And the consequences of your choice is not hidden. It was clearly revealed. That's a good thing about God, you know. God is not a despot. God is not going to hide Hide things in some rule that's buried. Everything is clearly written. So nobody can say, oh, I didn't know it. Everything is clearly written. 
from all the way back. Moses said to the people, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 16, Moses said this to the people of God, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his way, to keep his commandment, his statutes, and his judgment, that you may live and multiply. But your choice must first be made. Up in verse 15, it tells you, I set before you, I set before you today life and good. It is clearly set before you. You must choose. Seek ye this day. Seek ye this day. <clears throat> but many people, many people want to choose the good stuff first. So they call it. They want to choose the good stuff first. You know what? I want to tour the world. I want to be in this circuit. I want to sing these songs. I want to fill full up stadiums. I want people to come after me. And, and, and I, I want to be the main person in the room. When I walk in, people should just fall down. And people should just pull up my chair. When I walk in, they should say, do you know who that is? Consequence of choices. But what did the scripture say right here? Matthew 6 verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. All these things shall be added to you. Not choosing God. Not choosing God leads to death. Not choosing leads to death. It is as simple as that. You have choices. Not choosing leads to death. You're saying, but I've not cho chose God in a long time. I've rejected God. I don't care about you and your God. I don't care about your church. I don't care about any of that. But listen, we're not just talking about this physical death. We're talking about the spiritual death. And that's a big one. Because after that, guess what? You can't come back. There's no do-over. There's no praying you out of purgatory. There's no do any of that stuff. So Hebrews chapter 9, listen, verse 27. And it's appointed for men to die once. But after that, the judgment. After that, the judgment. So don't think because you're living your best life now. Don't think because everybody know you. Don't think because you're the life of the party. Don't think because now you're cute. Don't think because you have all the muscles. Don't think because now you have all the money. One day, one day, the consequence of your choices will catch up with you. Most times in today's day society, let me give you an example. Many of us who like to hold our liquor. Yeah, we like to drink 50 bottles. Bottles up and bottles, popping bottles up and bottles every night. Storing them up. Every night you go out, you're drinking 60 proof alcohol, 40 proof alcohol. You're drinking two, three bottles every night. And then one day, suddenly you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're a shock. Because your eyes are yellow. Your skin is yellow. You're saying, what is this? You still feel good, you know. And you run into the hospital. And they say, oh, they do a, a, a CT scan of your abdomen. And they say, oh, wait a minute. Your liver is cirrhotic. You say, what is that? And then they break it down in colloquial terms. It's like a big piece of sponge. You can't take no more. It is done. I said, what can I do to fix it? Uh, there's nothing you can do. I'm going to, what caused it? The years of alcohol. But I've only been drinking for three years. But you've been drinking four or five bottles of 60 proof every night. I, I'm going to give it up now. Too late. Consequence of your choices. Consequence of your choices, it catch up on you. Consequence of your choices, catch up on you. I've seen many such people come in and at that time, oh, uh, you know, I give up drinking now, you know. It is done too late shall be the cry. It is the same thing right here. Your consequence of choices. You're free not to choose God. But choosing God, when you choose God, you've made a wise choice. But not choosing God, meaning that you reject God. And when you reject God, God also have the right to give you his righteous judgment. 
God also have the right not to choose you to enter to you to enter into the kingdom of heaven because you acknowledge him. You refuse him all the days of your life. You, you, you choose him. You're saying, can we do such a thing? Can a man reject God? Yeah, you can. They turn away from Christ. What do you think turning away is? Turning away is rejecting them. And so when you turn away, it's not that God reject you. It's that you reject God. And so if you want to look at it simple, when you reject God, it's like you're giving God nothing to work with. Because you reject him, it's your choice. When you reject God, God is not going to hold you in your pants and pull you back in. You reject him because of the consequence of your choice. He may give you warning. He may send warning upon warning upon warning for you. Stop. Turn around. Stop. You may be driving down the street to your death and you're, you're tired. you get a flat tire. Because you have money, you call someone else, come pick me up. You're on your way again. There's a traffic jam. You pull over into this parking lot, call somebody, hey, bring the helicopter. They pick you up. Helicopter take off, it's flying. No, weather is bad. You land. Hey, pick me up. And you do and you do and you do. And when you reach your destination, there is someone, someone standing there telling you, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, you know. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? How many of you have seen those little people sometime? Out of nowhere, they just pop up. Jesus loves you. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Now get away from me, you Jesus thing. You're still moving and still going along. You see a car drive by, you see in the windshield. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon. Repent. You still ignore it. You're gone. And then suddenly... Suddenly, suddenly when you realize it, you're dead. You can't come back because of your choices. So consequence of choices. When you reject God or when you masquerade in church pretending like you are, you are a member of the body trying to fool everyone in the church, but deep in your heart you know that you're not a member. You know that you do not have a desire to follow after Christ. Christ know you too. Christ know you too. It's not just the people on the street. But those of you who are in church that pretend like you are with him. Pretend like you're with the movement. But really you are not. Really you are not. This is what Jesus is going to say to you on that day. The same Jesus that everyone likes to preach on. Oh, Jesus is love, love, love. He's also a God of wrath. Jesus will come and Jesus will rebuke you. What does the scripture say? Matthew 7 verse 23. All the religious folk. And I will declare to them. I never knew you. So all you are jumping in church. Playing the instrument. Doing all those stuff. Healing. Casting out demons. Doing all of that. Get baptized 50 times. Today you are baptizing Jesus only. Tomorrow you are baptizing Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The next day you have them sprinkling water on your head. The next day you are doing all those stuff. I will never, I, I never knew you. Get away from me. Because if your choices, you work of iniquity you. Your choice to reject God has consequences. Your choice to reject God of consequences. Yes, 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 yes. Speaking to those of you out there. Now in the world. And some of you who are still in church. Playing the fool. Your choices to reject God has consequences. Isaiah 59 verse 2. But your iniquities have separate you from God. You know who is an iniquity worker? Someone who lay down on their bed, as the scripture say, plan the wickedness. Plan every detail of it. Okay. Send me a text. Or do something, you know, whatever it is, you know, just put put a put a put a shoe in the window. So when I see the shoe, I know that's the signal. And I'll come out. Iniquity worker. You plan it so skillfully. You can't wait to carry out your action. It's like a premeditated thing. <clears throat> and that's the reason, even in today's day society, a premeditated crime. 
is usually not frowned upon. I mean, it's frowned upon, I should say. It's usually not favored. Premeditated murders, premeditated robbery, premeditated, meaning you have a chance to turn around, to walk away. <clears throat> you still decide to carry it out. So because of your iniquity, the prophet Isaiah is speaking. He spoke then, he's still speaking now, because the word of God is for every generation, transcend borders. And everything that was written in the past was written for us today so we can learn. And so what did the prophet say? But your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. And I like to say many of you are getting drunk, stealing, sexual immorality, all the like, living your best life now. Your iniquity is cutting you off. Saying some frivolous prayer outside of the will of God. You're saying, what is the will of God? It's clear. Scripture says, for the will of God is your salvation. For you to be saved. For you not to go to hell. That is the will of God. So if you're pay, praying for some frivolous things, God is not going to hear your prayer. Because your iniquity of this, uh, uh, make a blanket between you and him. There is some separation going on. And when there is separation going on, God is going to leave you alone to do what you want to do, do what you see fit. You're saying, is that true? You're saying, can God really leave us alone? Yes, he can. He is God. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Therefore, God also gave them up to their uncleanness in the loss of their hearts. And you can read the rest of it for yourself. God gave them up. People who choose not to follow God. People who choose to be iniquity workers. People who choose to thrive on immorality. God give them up. God give them up because of their uncleanness and the lust that's within their heart. You have a choice to sleep all day. You have a choice to do drugs. You have a choice to hate church. You have a choice to hate the preacher. You have a choice to hate me. You have a choice to criticize me. You have a choice to do all of that. You have a choice to throw a stone at your television. <laughs> you have a choice to do all of that, you know. You have a choice to laugh. You have a choice to say it is not real. You have a choice to say it is all fake stuff. You have a, cho you have a choice to say that it is a white man's religion. You have a choice to say I'm not going there because they're not, they're not giving us the real God. And even if they were to paint God black, but God is a spirit, you can't see the spirit. But even if God was physical, even if Christ was standing here, many of you were proclaiming that, oh, he's, he, he's black. Even if they were to paint him black, you would not follow him. Consequence of choices. And some of you who are white supremacists, even if he was to be here in front of you as white as snow, you still wouldn't follow him. You still would not follow him. And even if he was walking here stoic, those of you who love the stoic nature, you still wouldn't follow him. Consequence of choices. You have a choice to sleep all day. You have a choice to do everything that you want to do under the sun. Man had a choice and many turn away from Christ. There are his disciples and they turn away. So what? What? Who am I? I'm, I'm not going to chase you down. I'm not going to chase you down. It's your choice. It's your life. Because the scripture says, Behold, I come quickly to give unto every man, not to a group of men, not to the husband and wife, not to the family, not to the, this particular church. Every individual will have to stand up before God and give account. Every one of us will have to do that. So be warned today. You are being one, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 30, verse 17. But if your heart turns away, those of you who turn away from God, turn away because you believe it's your right. Yeah, it's your right, you backsliders. Yeah, we can touch on everybody now because you have a choice to do what you want to do. All of you walking in church all the years of your life. All the years of your life, 
but you go in some society and then you get corrupt and you decide to turn away. It was just a little, it was just a little frolicking, a little fun at first. A little going out to eat some dinner. Then your dressing start to change. Then your speech start to change. Then the company that you keep start to change. Have you noticed some people like that? And suddenly, suddenly they are morphed into something that's totally alien, an alien vine, the scripture called them. Who deserve nothing but to be pruned and tossed into the fire, to be burned up. So today, but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear, are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. What do I mean? You draw away, you're chasing idols, you're chasing fantasy, you're chasing your best life now because you fail to put God first. Listen to this. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. To get the promises of God, it is saying you must choose God. To get the promises of God today, even today, to get the righteous promise, you must choose God. You must be born again. There is no compromise. You must be willing to deny self. You must be willing to give it all and follow after, follow after Christ with all your heart, with all your way, with every part of you. And the reason, the reason for that is simple. It's clear. You can't be amalgamated with the world. You can't be yoked with the world and think that you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Listen to this. Matthew 7. Enter, verse 13, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And listen, and there are many who go on in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which lead to life. And there are few who find it. Let me give you, let me, give, let me, let me, let me get visual with you. Take my glasses off, the narrow gate. The gate is so narrow that my glasses, this little here, there's no plus or minus tolerance. Those of you who understand the engineering term, it's like a cylinder fitting into an engine block, a piston. If there is a pebble, if there's a pebble within there, that piston will not fire as it should. If they're scarring along the wall of the, of the engine block, you have some problem. You have some problem. So saying this, I have to take my glasses off because the way is just so fitted, conformed to my face. There's, there's, there's nothing. There's not a little blemish that can be on me. So when you're going in through the narrow path and you're squeezing through, you're squeezing through, there is nothing that should be on you. You can't go in with your big credit cards. You can't go in with your expensive liquor. You can't go in with your five, six women. You can't go in with none of that junk. You have to go in. You have to go in pure and holy, unspotted. There's no tolerance following after God. It's either or either. There's no give and take. There's no fitting into society. There's no because, I, because of that political party. I'm not following. I don't like that one. And I like this one. There's no, there's no, there's no because of that culture. There's no because of that race. There's none of that stuff right there. It's all about holiness. Holiness don't care about the political party. Holiness don't care about the culture. Holiness don't care how you look. Holiness is an attribute of God. And if it's an attribute of God, it means it is reflecting God. And so choose this day because the gate to get in is very narrow. It is very narrow. And a few will find it. What does that mean? It means even a lot of people in churches today, they are fooling themselves because they've still not found it. Still not found it. So those of you who are on the path to righteousness, that narrow way, I say to you today, continue to tread that pathway. Continue to walk that path. Don't let religious, religious things get in the way. 
Don't be a religious person who just go around and condemn everything, looking for everyone to condemn, looking for everyone to debate, looking for everyone to curse, looking for everyone to tell that they don't know doctrine, looking for everyone to tell them that you are, you are the real deal, looking for everyone to tell them that my church is the right church, you know, looking for everyone to tell them that I don't care. Follow after holiness. Preach the word in season and out of season. If the Bible say this, if the Bible say right here in Matthew 7, 22, many will say to me in that day. I'm not going to say some will say. The scripture is clear. Many will say. Many will say. Many will say. And so we have a problem today. Because people are turning around the gospel to suit their narrative. To hold people hostage. To hold people in bondage. What I say, choices of consequence. So choosing God is choosing life. Not choosing God is rejecting life. So you, when, you, when you relinquish your choice, when you relinquish your choice of life, you're relinquishing fellowship. You're relinquishing your choice with God. And many of you are guilty of this. Many of you have already been exposed to the way. To the way. To the way back in the day. People who follow after Christ, they were known as followers of the way. There's a way that seemed right unto a man. There's a way. It's, it, 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 you know, today, many people, many people, many people, many people are in that category. But many of you who are in that category, many of you are in church. You need to turn around, examine yourself, go back and repent. Go back and make the choice to follow after God. Because you're not following him. You're following a man. You're following a man. You, you, you're not going to church if the prophet is not speaking. And the only thing the prophet do when he comes to church is dance every Sunday. The only thing the prophet do is walk, walk around and speak frivolous things. I've, I've seen it, I've seen it, and I tell you, not everyone, and so the scripture is so alive. Not everyone who say, didn't I cast out demons? We see many people casting out demons now. Not everyone to say, didn't I heal the sick? We see that now. We see people faking they're raising people from the dead. We see people doing all these things. And a simple little thing as a pandemic, they couldn't do anything with it because they were faking it. They're faking it. We see people blowing the pandemic away. And it still came. Did what it had to do. Still do that. We see people selling holy water and selling gasoline water to cure all sort of stuff. Proclaiming that we cure AIDS, we cure cancer, we cure this. And then they say we had to shut down because the pandemic beat them up. Liars, many backsliders, because they're choosing wickedness. And so the prophet Jeremiah speak. He spoke then, he's speaking today. Jeremiah 2.19, your own wickedness will correct you. And your backsliding will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God and the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. So how do you choose God? By repenting. Not merely talking. Not merely saying a sinner's prayer. Because you can be coerced into saying a sinner's prayer. I don't remember how many sinners priors I had said before. I went to the street meeting one time and hear a guy talk about how some guy rode, about, rode away on the motorcycle and the motorcycle burst into flames and he died. And man, I was like, man, I don't want that to happen to me. And then he like put your hands in the air and all of us in the crowd stick our hands in the air. And we repeat after him. And when it was all done and all gone, we were in the party jamming. <laughs> it's not real there. We didn't choose anything. We were being coerced. And then they go around and talk about how many, how many, how many got saved. We didn't get saved. We just did something out of fear. But when you choose, you have a strong desire. Meaning you want to rid yourself of evil. Meaning you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The choice is easy. The choice is easy. Just talk to God. Tell God the position you're in. Tell God how, how, how you are. Tell God how messed up you've been in all, all your life. 
kneel down wherever you want to do it, driving down the street. You can do it when you're driving down the street. In your house, wherever you are, you can do it. You don't need any man to sanction you. There's only one mediator between God and man, and it's Christ Jesus. You don't need to go and lock up in any confession booth anywhere. You don't need to tell any man. No man has any telephone to heaven. You can talk to God. So you reject God when you ignore him. When you continue to live in sin. I don't care how, 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 how good you are. How squeaky clean you are. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I don't care how good, how much good. We have a lot of good people you know. We have a lot of good people. They, they give to charity. They, they will give you the shirt off their back. But guess what? They have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So really and truly. They're not good. Because goodness can only be, be from God. Yes. And so today you have to choose. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. And this is the, this is the part that I don't understand. You are being told what to choose. It says... Choose life that you both and your descendants may live. You can serve two masters. Joshua talked to the people. Joshua said, if it seem evil for you, if it seem evil for you, meaning if there's a strong desire, if it's undesirable, no, <laughs> it's so amazing. When Christ said, um, when Christ said, um, um, you know, the, 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 the desire, this is what they're saying. If it seems evil, meaning there's a strong desire. What am I talking about? Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seems evil, meaning if, it seem, if it's undesirable for you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself who you will serve. Choose for yourself who you will serve. So brothers and sisters, choose life. In Jesus' name, amen.